Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Hi Kelly. Hi Marsha. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Pretty Me nice, too. Nice here today. Oh really? Yeah, it's like, well, it's just sort of that, well, I don't know. Uh, it's probably 80. I oh. Know. I should have, before I say that, I should have um, checked the temperature. But it's just a nice time. I took Enzo out, you know, for a walk earlier. And it was just like that perfect temperature. Oh, it's 76. Okay. We and have 73. Is, uh, okay. And it's it's almost 2 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have, you know, beautiful blue sky, a few little wispy clouds, but just a really nice temperature, light breeze. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, I think perfect. the so coast I, area wasn't um, a, really impacted so much by the heat that we're supposed to be having. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I sometimes find that the when I take Enzo for a walk, I usually take him, you know, uh, between eleven and two. I like to go around noon, mm-hmm. you know, and then come back and have lunch or something. But um, it's been really hot, you know, when it's in the nineties. Yeah. Um, and he's so black, you know, I kind of, and I, you have black dogs and you live in, like, do mm-hmm. you ever worry about them in the heat? Like, he seems like he, his back gets really, really hot in that because yeah. he's a dark color. It right? was a worry when we were doing hunt training. Um, okay. With the, the black labs, it, it was definitely a worry. My two, mm-hmm. um, Bailey's a sunbather. Yeah. I mean, she goes out yeah. and lays on the driveway. And, you know, kind of soaks it up. And he's occasionally doing that, but he more more often uh, puts himself in the shade. I mean, he's heavier, so he mm-hmm. you know, his his body type is such that it, the heat impacts him a little bit more than it does her. But yeah, we haven't yeah. had enough heat to really bother them, I mean, to speak of, all summer long. So, And even yeah. um, while we were camping this past weekend, it was in, it was like in the high 80s where we were. But we were in mm-hmm. the shade, and and they didn't seem they really didn't seem too bothered, mm-hmm. as long as they have enough water, right? They didn't really seem too bothered by it. But you do have to worry about the yeah, and and so on those really hot days, I tried to go earlier in the day, and then I've met, I think I'm I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, but I have a cooling jacket. It looks like a like a like a thick rain jacket, mm-hmm. and, and it's a gray reflective material, and then you soak it in water, and so as it's the water evaporates, it keeps them cool. And then the light color and whatever the fabric is reflects mm-hmm. the sunlight. But, um, and it does seem to make a difference because if you put your hand between his body and the the jacket, it feels cool. Mm-hmm. He's cool to the touch. But, um, and I'm going to say something kind of is ridiculous is that I take him out for a walk in the hot weather and he's panting. So then I start worrying about him. Well, that's how he's cooling. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. That's the mechanism. <laughs> That's good that he's panting because that's how he cools down anyway. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, anyway, um, there is a level so, of, but, I mean, I know you're not you're not at this point, but there is a level of panting where you can tell that they're distressed and that they're really distressed. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't think he's ever been yeah. that way because mm-hmm. I always worry so much about any panting that goes on. I start, <laughs> which I know is ridiculous, but I, it's like, oh my, anyway. well, but you don't like to sweat either. It's the same thing, right? It's like, oh my God, I'm sweating. It's too hot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's well, what you do I, when you're I'm, too hot. Full right? d- well, in full di- disclosure, it's been so hot that I'm you know, just wringing wet when I come back. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I just, I've been showering in the evenings because I'm so, I get so hot, like just, you know, going out and watering the pots yeah. in that heat. I, I don't do well. And we talked right. about this before. I just don't do well in that heat. But yeah. anyway, the reason I bring all this up is today was just like this morning. We went about 1130, just that perfect temperature. So the sun 
You know, you know how that temperature where the sun feels warm, but it's a nice feeling warm as opposed to <laughs> I'm being punished by the sun, you know? Yeah, for me, that temperature is about 78, 80, where I feel like, oh, mm-hmm. it's warm, it's nice, it's perfect temperature. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but when it, we're talking 92 and 98, it's not It's not how it is. I, that's, I just feel like I'm uh, wilting, but anyway. <sighs> And then I kind of worry about his feet too, but he seems fine. Now this um, is this is this is true about Barry. He has the tenderest feet I have ever seen on a dog. He does not like to walk if if we're on a trail and it's too mm-hmm. we've been going too long. He doesn't want to be on the gravelly part of the trail. Mm-hmm. He wants to be on the edge if there's you know like vegetation. He wants to be in the edge where there's yeah. vegetation. Um, in yeah. fact, when we were in Bend, the the trail was hot, and he started acting real funny. And I thought, oh my gosh, is he having heat stroke? Because it was mm-hmm. warm, but he didn't, wasn't giving any of the other signs. But his back legs, he was doing some really weird things with his back legs. Well, what I finally realized is that his feet were hot, and he mm-hmm. he was trying to you know move his feet faster so he he wasn't feeling the heat. You know, Bailey doesn't yeah. even have any impact at all and he's doing all this funky stuff with his feet because he doesn't want to put him on the hot ground and it wasn't like a hot pavement Mm -hmm. it was a dirt trail you know Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway he's he's very he's got very sensitive (laughs) sensitive feet (laughs) you need to get him those uh the booties (laughs) that all the dogs have you know for my niece you, bought yeah. something for her dog that she was hiking with and she was having some problems and she actually bought some there's the like this cream that you that you use this stuff that mm-hmm. you put on them and it's supposed to toughen them up so mm. i i don't know how exactly it works but but she told me about that and i thought oh you know i i should get some of that she told me about it years ago when she first started using it and i thought oh i wonder what that was that she was using cuz <laughs> Barry could sure use it <laughs> hmm. well anything else going on to talk about or well i did mention a little bit about our camping trip we had a quick mm-hmm. uh well a weekend th- four days three nights um but quick in terms of it's right close to us about basically about 30 miles from us so it took us about mm-hmm. 45 minutes to get there with the trailer um, at Casa de Fruta, which is a roadside oh, yes. stop with, well, it started out as a fruit stand, you know, years and years mm-hmm. ago as a fruit stand. And then they had some, you know, little things like a little train that goes around and so you could, you know, get on the train and one of those little, you know, you just, it's not a real train. It's just a, a small, small train mm-hmm. track. And Mm -hmm. you just sit in it, open air seats. And and then they put in a carousel. So there's a merry-go-round there. And then they have all these peacocks. So we got to see peacock babies. And I didn't, I don't know how this happened, but it seemed like all of the peahens had only one chick. And I I was going to look it up before the episode and I forgot whether that's, I mean, maybe they only lay one egg. Maybe that's mm-hmm. typical. I don't know. Um, or maybe, or maybe there was some kind of uh, uh, man-made um, chick control going on because <laughs> they yeah. they have been kind of overrun in some years. Uh, when we've been there, there's been lots of peacocks. So maybe they're doing some kind of control. I have no idea, but it was fun to see. I, ha- I had never seen the chicks. And so I got a picture of a mom and a chick um, that I did post on Instagram. And that chick was pretty big. And then we went on, we walked a little further and we saw moms with really little chicks. So I mm-hmm. don't know. Um, I don't know what their season is, but it's chick season in, in the, okay. in the P in the, in the peafowl world, the peacocks and mm-hmm. peahens. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then this Casa de Fruta, they they added Casa de Wine. So they have deli and wine tasting. Casa de Burrito. <laughs> they have a mm-hmm. place where you can get a burrito at their gas station. Um, they have a motel and then they have an RV park. 
um, Casa de Bakery, <laughs> a little bakery and coffee shop. Anyway, they have all these little add-on shops that have come on by the years. And so it's kind of a fun place, I think, to walk around and look at all the look at all the stuff that they have and gift shops and stuff. But then the RV park was full of vintage trailers. Um, well, it wasn't really super full, but, but you know, it, it wasn't as big as it was pre-pandemic, but it was, but it was a lot of vintage trailers and people um, were going to workshops and Robert, so Robert signed up for workshops as like a boot camp for mm-hmm. vintage trailer owners or, um, people who are about to restore one or people who are just interested in getting one to learn what's entailed. And then people like Robert who have one, but there's maintenance and, you know, uh, driving kinds of issues, you know, axles, bearings, brakes, all that kind of stuff you need to know about how to keep your appliances in good shape when it's an, you know, old refrigerator with a compressor, how do you Mm -hmm. deal with that? So anyway, he took workshops and I was there for the food and the spinning and the trailer talk. And yeah, so I was the guest. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So I got to go to all the, they had breakfast and lunch, they had dinner one night Mm -hmm. and breakfast and lunch um, all the days. And so it was really fun. Me and the dogs walked around and did stuff during Mm -hmm. the day and I got to, Spin. Oh, I didn't tell you this. This is this is mm. this is new news. I met a man okay. <laughs> who has a vintage trailer. Robert, I met a man. I was gonna say, does, how's Robert feel about yeah. this? I'm kidding. <laughs> well, <laughs> the way you said it. <laughs> so he has an aristocrat, a vintage trailer, aristocrat. Okay, restoring. He was parked kind of kitty corner behind us. And he came by one day while I was spinning. I was spinning the Shetland that I've been working on. And he came by and he's like, what are you doing? And like, oh, that's you're spinning wool. I have sheep. Mm. Yeah, I have oh, sheep. magic words. Yes. <laughs> so he said, you know, do you, do you ever need wool? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, yes, of course. And he's, mm-hmm. he said... Um, and so I said, what kind of sheep do you have? Well, the good news is that two of his sheep are Wensleydale Romney crosses. Mm-hmm. So he's got kind of spinner's flock sheep, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he knows a little bit about how nice the fleece is of his two um, Wensleydale uh, Romney crosses. And... So we talked a little bit about that, but then he also has another, he also has uh, baby doll South Downs. And he's like, mm, well, that's okay. too short to spin. And I said, oh, no, it's not. I've spun baby doll South Down. It makes great sock yarn. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. And then he has a shearer that he's been working with. And he said she often will have clients who have wool that they, you know, don't know what to do with. And sometimes it's nice. Is what mm-hmm. he was telling me that, you know, she said sometimes it's really nice wool, but she doesn't have a, you know, she, she doesn't, they're just throwing it away or, you know, composting or whatever. Uh huh. So he said, you know, well, would you be interested? And I said, sure, I'd be interested. I said, you know, I, he said, well, how many would you want? And I said, well, I have, you know, I have, I don't know, six or eight in my garage. And he's like, is that a lot or a little? And I said, well, let me put it to you this way. If someone offered you trailer parts, <laughs> mm, yeah, really? You you would you probably wouldn't say no, right? He was laughing. Mm-hmm. So um so anyway, he took my card and he's gonna get in touch with me about wool. And oh, okay. we'll see. He lives in and he said, mm. Well, how would I get it to you? And I, he lives in San Martin, which is pretty close to us. I said, Well, you know, if you just get in touch with me, I can come up and you know, I can drive mm-hmm. up and pick it up. Um, mm-hmm. So I may have a little adventure to go pick up some wool. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, yeah. I don't know how much or or what kind of shape it's going to be in. You know, a lot of times it sounds better than it actually is. But I can't say no to that, you know. I know. I mean, at least to, to get the first batch. And then if it's like, okay, well, I don't need any more. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> 
you know. But he's he's definitely though not raising the sheep for the fleece. He's raising them for the meat, correct? I don't know why he's raising them. Um the oh, these or, the uh, um the Wensleydale Romneys, he said he had three and then one has passed on and so now he just has the two that are left. Okay. So it kind of sounded like he had them just to have them. As- I mean, as pets, kind of, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Not like, and I mean, maybe you're not talking about maybe fire control, you know, grass uh, control. Um, but it doesn't. It doesn't sound like he has, you know, fifty sheep that he's shearing. It's. I don't think so. Just a no, few. I, I okay. didn't ask how many he had of the of the South Downs, but but that's a bigger. He has more of those, I think, than mm. than um, he has of the other. The other. There's only two of them. So yeah. He, he was familiar. He said, I thought about, you know, doing something with it before, but I don't have the equipment. And, mm-hmm. and he's like, well, how do, you, how do you get it to where you can spin it? Because don't you need equipment? I'm like, oh, I have the equipment. <laughs> 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 oh, you don't even know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I showed him the, you know, the carded bats that I was spinning, the Shetland bats that I was spinning. And, and then I mm-hmm. showed him the sample of yarn. Cause I, I didn't have, um, I wasn't plying yet. I was just, um, evening out my bobbins mm-hmm. before I plied. And so, but I had the sample of the yarn hanging from my orifice hook. So I showed him that he was quite interested. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. So I, yeah. I will report back once I hear more. Um, about his okay. his fleece situation and yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see i met a man um, with fleece <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um and while you were talking about the the man you met with fleece um i just looked up i i did a quick google of uh peahens Oh. And how often, how many eggs they lay. Oh. So this is kind of funny. It says, a lot of people ask, how often do peacocks lay eggs? First of all, peacocks are male. <laughs> it's <laughs> peahens that lay eggs. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is, they do not, um, uh, peahens do not lay eggs in their first year. After they reach maturity, during a breeding season, they lay an egg every two to three days on average, and around 20 to 30 in total. <gasps> Um, and so they're con- the peahens are considered mature between one to two years. Um, and they, um, where does it 20 say? 20 eggs? 20 to 30 eggs. Is oh, it? my gosh. And, and like chickens, you know, they lay, a, 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 like a chicken lays an egg approximately every day. Mm-hmm. Approximately. Um, this, they, but it said every two to three days, I think it said that they lay an egg. And then when they get, um, um, like chickens, when they get a bunch of them, then they get broody mm-hmm. where they start putting them all in a pile, you know, and sitting on them. Hmm. And what month do um, uh, they lay? And uh, usually March uh, and April. They start laying between March and April. And then they stop in the fall, it looks like. Um, hmm. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah I, I suspected that maybe they were taking eggs away or something, you know, not letting yeah. them, um, not letting all the whole clutch hatch. Because, oh, here we. I'm reading, I'm sorry, you were saying something, I'm interrupting, but I was just reading through this. If you keep on top of collecting their eggs so they don't, do not go broody um, and stop laying eggs. So apparently they lay eight to 10 eggs or so, and then they get enough and they're like, okay, I'm done. And they go get broody and then they start sitting Mm -hmm. on them and taking care of them. If you keep taking the eggs away, they can lay 20 to 30 eggs in a year. So they'll keep laying. Oh, I see. Because they want, if you want egg production. Right, mm-hmm. which I don't know. Do people eat pea? I have no idea. Eggs? Yeah, I don't know. These are just mm. these are. Um, well, they're not totally wild, right? They're feral. But when I was there years and years ago with the girls when they were young, and I was camping in the old trailer that I used for dog shows, um, you know, you could walk. There were some trails out, kind of in the the area next to the creek and you could walk through that area next to the creek and, and they would just be roosting 
you know, roosting mm. in the trees, walking around. There are all kinds of them. And and there's there still were a lot of them, but I didn't I didn't see them so much in the wild or areas. I only saw them where the shops were. So maybe they have you know, maybe they uh they have a, a place where they roost. You know, maybe they're trying to keep them more like chickens where they roost mm-hmm. in a place that's more controlled mm-hmm. so that they don't get out yeah. of out, the population doesn't get doesn't get out of control. But anyway, yeah. I just yeah, I thought that was very a very interesting um, thing about Casa de Fruta is the the peacocks that they have. And I uh, I read a little further too, and people do eat their eggs. Okay, depending upon the 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 type of um, peacock. The uh, so they either they're ra- they're raising the the eggs uh, to sell the eggs, so people can then hatch their own peacock mm-hmm. or for eating. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to ask you now, getting off of peacocks and Casa de Fruta, but you were talking about your equipment in the the the, the man with wool mm-hmm. that you met was asking you like, do you have the equipment? I have to ask about your wheel. Have you done anything about fixing your wheel, or what's the word on the wheel? Yeah, I well, I finally got enough courage like to get over that sick feeling in the pit of my stomach. Like I didn't, I tried not to look at it. I just taped it all up mm-hmm. and then just kept spinning on it. it. I mean, it was fine to spin on, um, but it's like, I don't want to investigate. And then mm-hmm. <laughs> after the last episode, our friend Stella, and not enough time on Ravelry, um, mm-hmm. she messaged me and said, don't try to do the repair yourself. Have Ron, her husband, look at it. Okay. Because he... He does. I mean, he's he's an artist. He he makes mm-hmm. fabulous things out of wood. So, um, and, and really knowledgeable. So, I thought, okay, well, let me look at it and see if I can even describe to her what needs to happen. And then when I looked at it, I realized that it there's an my wheel is very modular. The little Herbie is very modular. So there's the flyer part of it, and then there's the the drive wheel part of it and treadle and then the two things are attached by an Mm l-shaped piece of wood and it's that l-shaped piece of wood where the damage was done so i can actually take that piece off and nothing else has a problem Mm -hmm. Um, so once i finish with this shetland that's what i'm going to do i'm going to um you take my wheel apart and meet up with stella and bring that piece um and and actually get it. I'm not going to use my I'm not going to use my syringe for cleaning pens and try to get glue mm-hmm. in it. And the whole thing I talked yeah, about yeah. last time I I've abandoned that idea. Um thanks to thanks to Stella's idea of, of having Ron mm-hmm. look at it. Um and and I and it'll be I think it won't be a really difficult repair um or mm-hmm. you know something that you know, where part of the working mechanism of the wheel is damaged. It's actually just mm-hmm. the piece that holds the flyer to the to the drive wheel and treadle. So Okay. All right. I was able to breathe kind of a sigh of relief about that once mm-hmm. I once I actually looked at it. So mm-hmm. so yeah. Okay. I have one Good. last project Good. that I'm gonna finish for the spin along. And I guess that can say segue, segue me into projects. Okay. So um, I just want to finish up the the black Shetland, um, the black Shetland fleece. I had said before that I. Uh, oh, I don't remember where how I don't have it in my project page. I thought I had the yardage in my project page. Oh, I had two skeins finished, um, and I think it was about 450 yards. Well, now I have an additional three skeins that are finished. I haven't put that into mm-hmm. my project page yet. I haven't I haven't added up the yardage from those because I still have singles on my bobbin. Mm-hmm. And so now the very last bit of the fleece, the carded bats that's remaining, I'm just going to even up all my three bobbins 
and mm-hmm. ply it off one last time. And maybe if okay. I'm lucky, it'll be like the last one where I evened them up so well that two of the bobbins ended within like a yard or two of each other. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll see if yes. that's the case. But um, so that project is winding down, and I'm going to try to get that finished this week. Mm-hmm. And that Shetland was, um, a, I, lo- I did look in the garage a little bit about where some of these fleeces came from. And this is a Shetland fleece that was purchased in 2017 at the Monterey County Wool Show. Okay. And then I did um, do a little bit more carding of the Wensleydale Cormo. But I haven't started spinning that. And I think I might not start spinning it. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I won't start spinning in time for the summer spin-in, but I was thinking I would, you know, that would be my next project. But I'm going to need something in between one black fleece and another black fleece. <laughs> How much black yes, fleece I can understand. you spin in a row? Because the right. the Shetland is about three pounds. Mm-hmm. I mean, when it was raw fleece, it was three pounds. So that's quite a lot. And then this is about, I don't know, maybe this is two pounds worth the Wensley Del Carmo, which is still quite a lot. So mm-hmm. I think I am going to need a, a spinning break in between. Okay. And I'm going to okay. be spinning the next project uh, because my wheel is going to be repaired. Uh, my next project is going to be on the Wyatt Norwegian wheel, which I haven't mm-hmm. spun on in a while. I, I think it's been put away since the beginning of the pandemic. Or sometime during 2020, um, yeah, is I, I I covered it and put it in my bedroom. Maybe before, maybe the Thanksgiving of 2019, I covered it and put it away in my bedroom because the kids were coming for Thanksgiving and mm. they, um, yeah, oh, they're older now, but still, um, Faye's still little. She, I mean, well, she's not little. She's in first grade, I think, but. But well, at that time, better, it, I mean, this was pre-pandemic. Yeah, just, they were younger, yeah. and it was just easier to not have to explain to them that it's not a pirate mm-hmm. ship steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I never thought about that. It looks exactly like a pirate yeah, that's ship. That's what they steel. wanted to do with it. Oh my <laughs> the gosh, year before that is so was, funny. Uh, play pirate ship and uh, steer the pirate ship with the wheel. So. Mm-hmm. I put it away and then, you know, I didn't ever get it out. So I'm going to get that one back out and, and spin on it, clean it up and oil it and spin on, spin on the Wyatt, Mm -hmm. the Wyatt wheel while my little Herbie has a rest and repair. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's my spinning. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the only thing I've been knitting on is more hats. I finished the CVM yarn from a uh, youthful fiber i finished the hats out of the cvm and then i found a ball of the targi the brown targi lamb that i used for my dark and stormy sweater i found Mm -hmm. i don't know how this happens i think i'm done with the leftovers and then something more pops up but i found a ball of Mm -hmm. that so i'm using that i'm using some leftover variegated yarn from western sky knits and then I'm using the alpaca Rauma to mm-hmm. me. Remember from the wall okay. of yarn when we oh right we right looked right for yeah. all those color combinations for our yes. socks. Mm-hmm. So the the to me is the alpaca wool, and it's it's pretty soft, and it's in a kind of a kind of an acid. A, kind of a soft acid green, not super sharp acid green, but a soft acid green. So my hat mm-hmm. is brown and then this acid green, and then I'm going to be adding in some of the variegated. And the variegated is brown and orange and black. It was called uh, Monarch. So it has kind of the colors of a Monarch butterfly. A lot of cream mm-hmm. in it, okay. black, brown, and orange. So okay. That'll mix in at some point. Hopefully I have enough. Um, Mm -hmm. Hopefully I have enough yarn to finish the hat. (laughs) So that's what I'm knitting on right now. But other than that, that's it. That's the extent of my my projects. 
Okay. Mostly spinning. Well, we're, yeah, I would say we're a, kind of similar. I, um, I don't have a lot to report. I've been working on the sweater that I've been meant talk, been working on for a while now, Happiness, um, by Kyle Konecki. And I think the last time we recorded, I was working on shaping the armhole. So you have to do some increases at the side seams for the shaping the armholes. And then you put the back on hold and just knit the front uh, seven inches. So that's going to be the, the front part of the armhole. Then I will go back and pick up the stitches for the back and do the same thing and then join them together. Um, yeah, so I'm, I've done, um, on the front, I'm looking at it. I'm knitting on this. I was gonna say, I thought I had done about two inches. I've done about three inches of the front, uh, of the arm. Okay. So I'm coming along on this. I had mentioned to you, Kelly, earlier that the, the yarn is a four ply and it's not too splitty, but I am noticing every so often a, when I come back, like I, I'll knit a row and then I come back and I'll see that I've gotten just like one single that I've knit mm. or a couple of times I can see down like an inch or two inches down that I've done that. And I, you know, I'll just drop that stitch all the way down and correct it and pick it up. So I'm trying to be sort of careful. I think I've caught most of them, but um, I really, I, I've mentioned this before, but I really am enjoying knitting on this. And I, I love the colors and it's so interesting when I'm knitting on it, um, people's reactions to it. <laughs> um, <laughs> cause, um, I, I, it's like some people, it's like, it's way too loud, mm -hmm. but, and then other people are mm -hmm. like, love the colors. So, um, it's like, I always say, uh, I had a, a professor, uh, when I was in the community college, you talked about, you can tell a romantic cause they go to, uh, Venice and they talk about how beautiful the buildings are and the canals and how beautiful Venice is. And then a pragmatist goes there and say, like, oh, my gosh, it smells so bad here. <laughs> the, the canals, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's sort of the same thing. You could, it, It's like uh, it says something about people's personalities that about color, you know, what is too bright and mm -hmm. what's not bright enough, you know. Um, but I, as I, I've mentioned this before, though, I think – very, very bright colors, like acid green and bright orange and... Um, sort of magenta, fuchsia, like, like, pink. Yeah, magenta. Yeah, there's like, and there's some white where the yarn was not dyed. And then some... Um, um, because it is... Um, I'm assuming when this yarn was dyed, it was painted. You know, and then as it... You know, as the dye sort of expands up the wet yarn, mm -hmm. it gets fainter so there's some percentages too yeah but i my, i think the overall effect because it is fingering weight the overall effect i've talked about before is more muted than if you're looking at that individual color in right. skeins of yarn like if you had if you had those individual colors in skeins of yarn i think it would be kind of shocking yeah but because they have the intense color and the sort of muted percentage color and it's all blended up on this uh, as i said fingering weight um, to me, it seems fairly muted. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what other people, you yeah, know, I, I haven't I seen think, that many people, but. I think sometimes when people look at colors, they look at them individually instead of looking at like mm -hmm. the whole picture. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're right about the muting of it, especially, I mean, there is some cream and then there is the lighter parts where it, where the color kind of fades between one color and mm -hmm. another. Yeah, I would not say it's, well, I think you said someone used the word garish. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's bright, but not garish. Yeah, and I don't know if there's it, much yeah. difference in those, mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. But anyway, it's colorful. thoroughly enjoying the I would call this. it colorful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just really, uh, now it's a, okay. <laughs> now, the other thing too, there's knitting on a project and then there's actually wearing the project. Right. You know, mm -hmm. that can be two different things too, but I just think it's fantastic. I love the, and you know, I wear some pretty, I wear some bright things. Yeah. You know, I don't, uh, yeah, but, you don't um, shy away from wearing colorful things. No, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I would also say too, as I've gotten older, there are certain colors that I no longer, I don't really wear beige anymore and cream. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I have a white t-shirt on, but like in the winter, I don't really wear white, Yeah, I'm, you know, pale kind of. And I, I think as we get older, our coloring changes. And yeah. so sometimes wearing bright colors is actually better as you get older, mm-hmm. I think, than, um, um, yeah, I mean, the- well, that's another, that I would say that's another, another whole, uh, podcast yeah. about middle-aged women sort of fading away just in society <laughs> you know but that's another whole podcast yeah. Yeah. um figuratively and literally you know. <laughs> figuratively yeah. and literally yeah but i think away. when you're when you're like for example my eyebrows i mean i i have always had dark hair right mm. and so dark eyebrows eyelashes all of that my sister w- was blonde and she you know her eye eyebrows and eyelashes in summer would just kind of disappear you know Mm -hmm. and so and and so she was when we were younger you know like oh i have to wear mascara and i never felt Mm -hmm. like that you know um but now Mm -hmm. that i'm now that i'm 60 um Mm -hmm. you know i look at some days i was like where did my eyebrows go you know (laughs) (laughs) where where are they and and (laughs) they're also thinner than they used to be and so and and i'm not you know i'm not I'm I'm going gray definitely, mm-hmm. um, but not not solid silver gray like my mom. I don't think. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. But by the I age no I am what's... now, my mom was really gray, a lot more mm-hmm. gray than I am, um, and it was much more concentrated in certain areas. And so mm-hmm. she had that sort of framing of her face with silver, you know, which mm-hmm. changes what you can wear and not wear. Or, Gave her mm-hmm. gave her the ability to wear colors that she hadn't been able to wear before. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this is kind of interesting. Okay, so my sweater, and then the other thing I've just been I I have been I'm not spending I th- as I said the last time I'm not spending on the Banks Lawton mm-hmm. at all. I've not touched that, but You're I've just been a color break. on. <laughs> I'm having a color break, and it really resonated what you said is you can't go from one black feast. To fleece to another black fleece you have to have something in between yeah um, and that's what i talked about before is why i had to stop on that because mm-hmm. um, that's as to remind people it's a two pound bag of roving and i spun a pound so um uh, and it's kind of a cinnamon yeah. brown color or maybe not yeah not cinnamon maybe maybe cafe au lait brown yeah yeah um so anyway but i've it's been spinning on the two braids that we bought at Black Sheep Gathering. You bought the um, silk merino. I bought the silk merino and then a Corydale. And I have now spun four skeins. Mm. It's a two ply. And I now have, uh, if, my, if my math and counting is correct, 994 yards. So just shy of 1,000 yards and a total of 9.6 ounces. So roughly, I'm still getting roughly a hundred yards per ounce. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, pretty good. And so I have um, my basket here. I have spun one more full bobbin of the Corydale, and I have probably three quarters of a bobbin of the Silk Merino. And I'm so I'm, I just have to finish that bobbin, and I have. I don't know. I didn't see how many ounces I have, but I have, you know, a grapefruit size. If I wind it, the roving of the silk mm-hmm. merino into a ball, I have about a grapefruit size ball and um, a little less of the, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I did. Oh, no, I can't. Remember. Oh, no, here it is. I, I, I had there's so much fiber in here. I couldn't find it. I have of the Corydale, I have another sort of um, grapefruit size ball. Um, so, um, that I need to, but I didn't have any more room on the bobbin. So that'll have to go on another bobbin. Um, it'll be interesting as we've talked about every episode, how much, cause I, this is not going to come. I'm maybe I'll be surprised and it will come out even the two mm-hmm. singles. I don't think they are. I think I'm going to have more of the silk Merino yeah. than of the Corydale, but we'll see. Cause they're, approximately the same size balls but i have to spin more of the silk to fill up the bobbin so Mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how it works out um but that's it for me for projects not not a lot Mm -hmm. um just the 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 just going back to the sweater it does take a while 
to get across a row because I have, there's a total of 400 stitches now across the shoulders Mm -hmm. and the sleeves. And the sleeves kind of drop down. The shoulders and sleeves will kind of drop down a bit. So it's, uh, so the front, the front and back are each 200. That takes a while to get get across Mm -hmm. the row, you know? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a nice, a nice little, uh, endless stockinette project (laughs) (laughs) anyway you'll be on it for so well i have as you were talking i was thinking about my next project and i had mentioned in the last episode that i had some rug weaving for the dogs Mm -hmm. um, blankets in mind but i also as of this episode i had started thinking about um, i started thinking about christmas and you know, I had made, I, I don't think it was a Christmas present for Faye, her blanket. Mm-hmm. I don't think her blanket was a f- Christmas present. I don't remember now when she No, it was it. her birthday gift. Oh, yeah, her birthday, because it was in October. Yeah, because you kind of were down to the wire and uh, getting it done. That's right. Uh, or, I mean, uh, crocheting all the flowers together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that now, yeah, the timing of that. So I have th- been thinking for a while that I wanted to do one for Kai, um, mm. you know, he's in fifth grade now. So it's like, okay, what do you, what kind of a Afghan do you crochet for a boy in fifth mm-hmm. grade? Right. But I mm-hmm. found this, um, he likes Minecraft. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, okay, does he still like Minecraft? And he, it turns out he does. Um, you know, cause they change so fast at that age mm-hmm. from stuff that they like to stuff they think is dumb, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently he still likes it. And anyway, so I found this blanket is called the Minecraft blanket by okay. the loopy stitch. And I had looked I'm at it look before. It up right now. Um, I looked at it before and I had looked at the projects and then I had gone and looked at, it's Steve. It's Steve from Minecraft, the Minecraft Steve blanket. It's just called Minecraft blanket on Ravelry, but it's a free pattern. And in the pattern, it says Minecraft Steve blanket. Now, I know basically nothing about Minecraft, but I did go and look at Steve and like how how true are these colors? Are there different colors? How Does it really look like Steve? You know, I wanted to know is, is Kai going to look at this and go, well, that's dumb. Or is he going to think it's cool? And it's a pretty nice, I think it's a pretty nice replica of Steve. But Mm -hmm. listeners, any of you who are big Minecraft fans or know somebody who is a Minecraft fan um, and know something about it, take a look at this blanket and let me know if you think this would be a good choice um, for a boy in fifth grade. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Oh, good. Yeah. Right now, as we're talking about it. Um, and I looked through all the projects, uh, people's, pro- you know, different projects, because they use different colors. Um, there's, you know, there's various iterations of Steve's coloring and the color of his clothing. And and that made me go look to see, okay, like, which one of these is, quote, right? Which, mm-hmm. which I'm not sure there really is, quote, right, because I saw lots of different variations um, on you know the different parts of his sword and his shirt and his hair color and all that I saw in on in you know the images on Google searches I found a lot of them so anyway this is what I think I'm gonna do and it's made of squares like a billion squares <laughs> yes <laughs> well I'm I'm Crochet. looking at it and I to, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm looking at it because I, I know Ben was went through a period of time where he was obsessed with Minecraft. And I know you build things. I don't know who Steve is, though. So this is, I, yeah, I will ask him. Yeah, he's home, that, as you know, he's home this summer. So oh, when yeah, I see him, yeah. I'll ask him if he remembers what who Steve is or what Steve is. or Because the other yeah. projects are the green sort of monster face looking thing. Mm-hmm. Which uh, Minecraft ke- Minecraft Creeper blanket, but that looks too simple. It's just green squares and black face, a black face and green mm-hmm. squares. 
So I thought it might be more fun. There's one that's just Steve's face, it looks like. A crocheted blanket that's just Steve's face. I'm not sure why Steve looks cross-eyed in these pictures, but maybe that's how he goes. <laughs> and then there's also one by Petra Klein that has different characters. Like there's a pig and a cow and an orange-haired oh, yes. face. And I don't see Steve. Oh, yeah, this is cute. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't see Steve. St isn't Steve right there in the center? Are you looking at the C2C Crochet Minecraft Afghan? Yeah. I don't see a center there. Well, and well, actually, oh, I shouldn't say center. Oh, maybe that's center. Steve on the, like, on the left of Well, the I think it's row. Steve. Uh, we're right in the middle of the second row. Isn't that Steve? It's green. The green and black? No, that's the green and black. That's the creeper. <laughs> we're talking about oh. something we know absolutely oh my gosh. nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. Steve's like a person. Oh, I see what you're. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm so, gonna go back and look at this again. <laughs> anyway, I I don't I, know where Steve I clearly, is. Clearly, Marsha and I clearly need to, an education in Minecraft. Yeah, we need an education. The other thing I would say uh, about the C2C crochet Minecraft Afghan, it's not a, a real cro. I mean, the picture is not a real crocheted project. It's right. A, it's like it's like the design era. What am I trying yeah. to say? It's like someone created the design. It's like a and there's no project a, pictures. It says there's two no. projects, but there's nothing to look at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that one is going to have to. Um, that one's going to have to. I, I wouldn't want to do that because I don't know enough about Minecraft mm -hmm. to make it believable. So anyway, this Minecraft blanket by the Loopy Stitch actually looks fun. Mm -hmm. um, fun to put together. Fun to choose the colors. I'm not sure how fun to make all the squares. It doesn't say how many squares on the project page, but it's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. yeah. Well, you can count them up, I guess. Like over 400, yeah. maybe? Probably. I, I, I would say. Looks like it's at least 20 across. So anyway, that's my thoughts. <laughs> my crazy thoughts about uh, his birthday's in March. So if I could just, you know, start working on it for next year in March. But I don't want to wait too long because he might change his mind about whether this is something he cares about. I was going to say, this is the problem with children. Yeah is that they change their minds so quickly about what they yeah. like and they don't but like. But he's so. liked Minecraft for a long time. Yeah. And it's been around for a long time, apparently. Again, Marsha and I need an education on Minecraft. <laughs> okay, I'm counting. It's 18 squares wide. Okay. 6, 8, 10, 12. 18 by? 15, 16, 18, and by, I think, 20 squares. Yeah, so 360 squares. Oh, that's totally doable. They're small. Oh, here it says each square measures approximately 8.5 centimeters. Yeah, so that's not wow. even four inches across. Yeah. They're little yeah. pixels that make up his picture. Yeah. So, I mean, they yeah. you, could yeah. do, you could do multiple squares in an evening. And you don't have to change colors. All the squares mm -hmm. are so a single color. They're all solid, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's supposed to look pixely, like right. pixels kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that would be good. You know, I wouldn't have to be changing colors and weaving in ends. I mean, weaving in multiple ends. Well, I'd, mm -hmm. have, I'd have multiple ends per square, but there's a way you can do join as you go crochet. Oh, okay. and that might be kind of cool. Rather than have all of them be separate. Someone showed me how to do that. And I think I could okay. make that work here. So anyway, that's... I'm just excited about the possibility of another crochet project. Mm -hmm. But I still have to do some thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big commitment. Well, well, thinking, but also research about Minecraft. Yes. So. <laughs> like, who's Steve? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, anyway. And does his shirt have okay. to be blue? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Huh. If I go to well, nitpicks and look for the colors, will I be able to find the colors that will work? You know, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, because um, this doesn't um, have anything about the yarn. No. What yarn they used. Yeah. Uh, now, maybe if you go to the their website. Well, I used the you. nitpicks Brava Sport, Bra Brava Worsted for phase. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of a nice yarn, a nice yarn to work with. I, I thought it was a good yeah. crochet yarn. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, that'll be fun. I, I, I think since you brought up our next projects, I hate to even say this, but I think my next project is I'm going to go back to Ben's sweater. Oh, good. Um, I think it's been sitting, it's been banished to the closet. <laughs> um. It'll be a while because I have to finish this uh, happiness, but I think I'm going to go back to that. I feel a bit more refreshed about it, and I know mm -hmm. what I need. You know, I know what I did wrong, and I know what I need to correct. I just need to rip it back out again. Yeah. So, um, um, yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're feeling positive about mm -hmm. about picking it up again. A little break, yeah, is all you needed. Yeah, a little break. So um, I think the other thing we just need to mention, we've mentioned it every episode now, but um, the summer spin-in, and the last day is September 5th, and um, what do we want to say, Kelly? Well, we, We've talked in, about the prizes, um, they're listed in the show notes, the prizes, and we'll have other prizes probably other than what's mm -hmm. here. Uh, we're going to draw from both the finished object thread and the discussion thread and also on instagram the hashtag summer spin in 2022 um yeah and and what? right now the hashtag doesn't have very many posts um and the um the hashtag doesn't have very many posts and the finished objects are are not real um full either so have a good chance of uh, you know better chance of winning if you post in mm -hmm. those two um the chat thread is long and that i mean there's chatter in that every day so we'll definitely be pulling prizes from there but but yeah i want to make sure people um i didn't put up the finished object thread really early in the spin in and so you might have finished projects that you didn't post so if you want to post them in that fo thread um, go ahead and do that before uh, it's two week two weeks away um, from when this episode goes goes out. Is um, uh, Labor we Day have weekend. quite a few? There's I don't know. There's um, well, it says fewer than a hundred. I don't. I can't yeah. count these up. There's and, more. And a lot count. of them are mine, which don't. Okay. Right. And and I don't believe any of them are mine. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think I posted mine on here. So yeah, so I better. I I am wrong. I need to take care of that. There's um, so there's there's lots of going to be lots of opportunities to win if you, if you, uh, post your post your projects and let us see what you're doing. Yeah, and then yeah. our yeah. next episode will be, uh, coming out the weekend that it ends. So we won't be mm -hmm. drawing prizes in our next episode in episode 190, but we should be ready to draw prizes in episode 191. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. If you wait okay. till the next, you know, well, if you if you're behind, you might not hear this, but if you're listen, you know, if you're listening as they come out, uh next episode will be the very last episode before the end of the summer spin in. So, it's coming to mm -hmm. a close. Summer's coming to mm -hmm. a close. I have two weeks left of school. Well, I have mm -hmm. the rest of this week and part of next week before I'm back to work. And I still don't know for sure what my schedule is. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Our enrollments are down. My schedule's been messed up. But oh. cross your fingers that I get a good schedule. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't I don't know if seniority has anything, but you've been there a long time. It yeah. Like I mean, yeah. So I'm hoping that that. I've made a few suggestions. Um, well, I had one change and it worked out perfectly. And then they canceled, they decided to cancel that class too for low enrollment. Mm -hmm. So well, that was disappointing. Um, 
so there's a there's you know there's some classes available that other people have an overload and they they have mm-hmm. classes that they can give up to me they won't like it but mm-hmm. so I've made some suggestions of what I would like we'll see if I get it mm-hmm. okay well, hopefully fingers crossed yeah, for you yeah but anyway um, yeah. why did I say that about my schedule I I guess just because school's starting but I don't know what I'm yeah. teaching for sure. Oh, it was in the in the context that the summer spin-in is about to end, September yeah. 5th, which means summer is sort of wrapping and up. winding down, mm-hmm. which means school starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am excited about school starting, um, but a little bit w- worried about what I'm going to end up. What's going to be my, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the one class they 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 canceled. What's going to be replacing it? So yeah. anyway, okay. All we'll right. Keep us posted. And yeah. I, okay. I will. Um, okay. All right. Well, we should probably say goodbye then. <laughs> okay. And we'll we'll talk in two weeks. All right. Sounds good. All righty. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit two use fiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part for World Fleece. Fleece.